With me is Craig Monte, who was recruited by the FBI to take part in the agency's most controversial tactics. He was a confidential informant sent to infiltrate Californian mosques to root out radicals and to investigate the Muslim community from within. Now, six years later, he is with civil liberties groups to campaign for their rights. Thank you for having me. Back in 2006, you became Farouk Al-Aziz, a French Syrian in search of his Islamic roots. Tell me, how did that happen? Well, I was successful as an informant from 2003 to early 2006, working on murder for hire uh, operations, mm -hmm. bank robberies, uh, infiltrating white supremacist groups. And one day, I, as I was speaking to my handler, her name was Tracy Hanlon. I said, I think uh, I'm interested in infiltrating mosques. And she said, oh my gosh, that would be amazing. You would be gold. They needed a man, a specific kind of man, a certain man who can, with the proper training, can adapt and blend in into the Muslim community, learn the language, learn the religion, and use the religion and the culture against the Muslim community. The FBI supplied me with uh, sophisticated surveillance devices. They were called key fobs. Mm -hmm. It's like a, remote con a car remote control. I had maybe between five and six of them. They're always charged and I left them around the mosques where I would frequently pray. I had one in my pocket the entire time, always on. And I had the other key fobs just laying around in certain places where they wanted me to target, like the uh, imam's offices, uh, certain board members' offices, uh, certain worshippers' cars, in their homes. So those devices were pretty much used on a daily basis. Some believe that entrapment is a necessary evil. It is a part of a price to be paid for national security. Do you agree with that? No, I, I don't agree. Uh, in retrospect, especially because, again, I, I use those tactics on a daily basis for over a year. But I disagree. And the reason why I disagree is because entrapment methods never stop. It always grows. There's no boundaries for it. If I can seek out an individual and get them, coerce them in some way to do something they normally wouldn't do, that behavior from the informant only grows into more of a violation, more severe violations of the civil rights of Americans. So I think entrapment alone must be stopped. Did you use any information that you acquired to create other informants? Yes, yes, that was part of my role on Operation Flex. For example, in my conversations or in their private conversations, uh, let's say certain things would come up, like uh, if the, a Muslim man was married and he had a girlfriend, a mistress, the FBI would use that information to blackmail that individual to become an informant or if someone perhaps had a different sexual orientation. The FBI would use that information to blackmail them to become an informant. Or a certain youth, if they had recreational drug use or desire to use certain narcotics on a, a, a misdemeanor level, mm -hmm. the FBI would use that to blackmail them to become an informant. You've said earlier in one of your interviews that at that time you felt you were untouchable. Because I was protected by the FBI under the bracket 
of national security. So that is the most untouchable that an individual can be, where the local police or even federal officials cannot arrest them because of transactional immunity. At that time, did you have any concerns about what you were doing was wrong? Yes, I did, but it, I was being paid a lot of money at the time, and I was assured by my handlers that the information that I was gathering and the method that I was using to gather it was far more important than the violation of anyone's rights. Mm -hmm. So I continued. My handler, Kevin Armstrong, had serious concerns about the method in which I was tasked to use to gather information. But he was overruled by the operational leader, Paul Allen, to keep me using entrapment types of methods to gather information. How widespread is uh, entrapment among law enforcement agencies in the U.S.? In my experience, and I've worked with <coughs> several federal agencies and several local police departments as an informant. And I'll tell you this, on each and every operation and case I've worked on, a large degree, a large degree of entrapment is the principal method. That's not justice. That is a grave injustice. And I believe the, S the FBI must rethink their policies and procedures because I believe that entrapment creates enemies. Because all entrapment really is, is the bottom line, it is setting someone up. Does the U.S. entrap people abroad too? Abroad? Yes. Yes. Operation Flex began in the United States, but Operation Flex expanded to beyond the borders of the United States. And there were people in Afghanistan and a certain few in Iraq, uh, a few in Yemen, who were entrapped, but they were used, that, that method of entrapment was used to blackmail them to become informants, not lead to an arrest. It was to blackmail them. Now, in regards to Victor Butte, he was implicated somehow in dealing with Charles Taylor uh, when he was a president of Liberia, uh, he was accused of having ties with the RUF in Sierra Leone, among other areas in the, in the world, in Africa rather, where he was accused of providing arms. Usually, when they want you, they meeting federal authorities, DEA, ATF, FBI, they will arrange some type of operation where they lure you in an entrapment manner where you may be innocent of that particular crime, but they'll use that arrest to pressure you to plead guilty on other arrests. So, having known the methods of the FBI, DEA, ATF, which I worked as an informant with those individual agencies, not only the FBI, I would say entrapment is definitely there. Are other minority communities in America targeted as intensively as Muslims? No, I think the Muslims today are what the African Americans were in the 50s, 60s, and 70s. I think the, the order of today, where the FBI needs an enemy, 
they found it in Islam. And I think, unfortunately, it's going to last a long time. Religious war, yes, but they will never say that because they can't. It's a violation of one's constitutional rights. But that's exactly what it is. The war on terror is a war on Islam. Thank you. You're welcome.